This is Michael Amadam, Executive Editor of Adolescent Catechesis at Ave Maria Press, and I'm here to talk to you about the release of our new textbook series, Encountering Jesus. Encountering Jesus is the second generation of our textbook since the release of the USCCB curriculum framework. We've surveyed extensively across the nation, talking to many teachers, both face-to-face -face and through electronic surveys, and heard several uh, valuable pieces of input that we've now implemented into our textbooks. We've come up with a new pedagogical redesign, a lot of it based on not only your input, but on consultation with the faculty, especially at Loyola University of Chicago, Dr. Lorraine Ozar, and also her assistant, Dr. Michael Boyle. Through their discussion, we've come to realization that I'm sure you're aware of as well, that teens of this age are digital natives to the, their phones and their screens, and they learn in a much different way. Their, their reading patterns are different than generations that read strictly from a printed page. So with that in mind, and with also some comments we heard about uh, the rep repetitiveness of both the USCCP framework and especially through courses one through three, we implemented several new designs, and that's what I'd like to talk to you about in the rest of the presentation. Okay, here's some of the new elements of our textbooks, and I'm just going to take you through a sample chapter. So this is not in order of importance, but also just in order of chronology in a, in a specific chapter. So one of the new additions that we've implemented is we are calling it a news intro story. When we talk to teachers, we ask if that introduction story where it's connected with the student's life, it's a pattern in many textbooks over the years, including in elementary textbooks, is something that's worthwhile. And the overwhelming answer was yes. Anything that can connect to the student's own experience would be a valuable addition to a text. So we wanted to include not a made-up story, something that we're creating in-house or an author is writing, but something directly from the news today. And so um, you might have a contemporary opener of something that relates to World Youth Day, Pope Francis, a social justice issue, whatever the topic is that connects with the material that's going to be covered, a practice of the sacraments. The advantage to that as well is that since many of our books are electronic now in nature, those stories can be substituted in and out um, prior to the next printing of a book. So you can get updated stories, you know, hopefully eventually yearly or maybe every other year in the text and uh, keep the books fresher and newer that way. The other thing to, I'd like to point out here is that we've decided to recreate our books in the second person narrative. So you'll hear the second person pronoun you a lot more than in our original edition, which was the third person, we and us. And the thought is that uh, us as authors, we as authors and you as adults as well, sometimes are not unified with the students who are in your class, especially the non-Catholic students. So it's better to direct them in that second person narrative. It makes it a little more friendly approach and a more accessible approach to them. So that'll be another change that you will notice in our text. The next page you'll notice in our chapters is a large prominently listed focus question. This focus question is kind of the big picture question, one that we hope the students will be, be able to answer not only at the end of the chapter, but well beyond their time in this semester-long course. There's a couple of ways it will be assessed, definitely within the section assessment questions that are run throughout the chapter, and also at the very end of the chapter, there are three different assignments with the students having the option of choosing one based on their varying learning styles that will be able to refer back to this question and help them to answer and apply that to their own lives. Next, uh, when we get into the heart of the chapter, one of the differences from our first edition of books is that we're going to clearly label the sections. Uh, we heard from some of the surveys that teachers were having a little bit of trouble uh, planning their lesson plans around our chapters because some chapters had maybe five main sections, some had three or two. We wanted to make sure that each chapter has three or four sections that are clearly labeled by heading section one, section two, section three, and also their title. Um, with an introductory section to kind of lead into the chapter itself. So those, those sections will be labeled, as you can see on the screen. Um, also on this page, um, a couple of things to point out is um, it was clearly stated to us that, as we did in our first edition, to keep the glossary definition terms right on the page and pull out, pull out 
sections rather than just list them at the back of a chapter. So we've continued to do that and they're clearly labeled in the margins of each of our textbooks. Then there's something new here you can see at the bottom of the screen and that's this note-taking panel. Uh, we asked teachers, when do students um, primarily read the material that you've assigned to them? Do they do it as preparation to the lesson that you're going to give or do they do it afterwards as follow-up? And the clear answer was that they did it, they would read the material after as follow-up. So how do you assess that? How do you assess that the reading or the importance of the material that's being covered in the textbook? How do you make sure that they've read the material? So we've decided to offer, um, based on your suggestions, a different note-taking option. Bas basically, it's a graphic organizer. It might be a way to outline that section material it might be a Venn diagram uh, suggestion or in this case uh, this little pyramid of priorities to summarize the material in the section. Then at the end of the chapter in a section assessment which you'll see on the next screen um, there the note-taking um, elements are then referred to again in a section assessment question so the students take the notes and then at the end of that chapter they can refer back to their notes and answer the question. I will say though that even if they do not use that note-taking option, they'll still be able to answer these comprehensive questions based on just the material in the section. The other thing to know is that this is basically good for a traditional notebook where the students would recreate these diagrams or graphic organizers in a traditional paper and pen notebook, or it's also good on any uh, version of uh, electronic note-taking um, uh, applications like OneNote and any others that are out there these days. All right, so now we're going to move on to a next page and another thing to talk about. Um, you know, again, I mentioned earlier in the presentation that one of the comments we had was there's so much material and you only have one semester to cover the material and how do you do that? And so we've um, looked for different ways to present the material. One of them is to present some of it with interesting and um, informative photos and then to increase the the information that's then covered in the caption of the photos. So this page has just one photo but there'll be other designs in a chapter where there's a, a general photo essay and then we'll have detailed information that's then in the caption uh, for the students to read. So you'll need to point out that this is essential re uh, reading material as well. And I do want to say that these captions were turned in to the USCCB for review so this material is counted for the comprehensive nature of their review, the completeness uh, element of their review. So uh, know that we're not missing or skimping on any material that they once covered in the first edition. It's all here now, just presented in a different way. Also, uh, we're using a, a variety of classical and contemporary photos that relate to church life and the actual subject matter, whether it be sacraments or morality or social justice or scripture. Uh, from both earlier periods and, and relevant to t today. But we're trying to avoid a lot of the, and we heard this comment, a lot of the photos of just teens uh, holding a Bible or teens gathered in a conversation around the lunch table or stuff. This really uh, serves no function but a design function in textbooks. So we're mo we've moved away from that a little bit. Another way that um, we are deciding to cover some of this material, again, thinking about the ways teens learn today is to use a variety of infographics and the one example here is on this page uh, that covers some of the church heresies. Um, so we're going to use those in two different ways. One is as a pullout feature so the students read along the running text and now there's a separate pullout feature where they read this material now covered in an infographic. The second option I think is looked at a little bit on the second page but we have other examples of well, uh, as well where students will be reading along in the running text and re rather than seeing like a, a long uh, section of maybe three or four paragraphs of just straight text or even a bulleted list, some of this material will be now covered in an info infographic and it gives teachers and students an idea of what's really important for that chapter or that section to cover, especially for their assessment and that's going to come up later in either a chapter test or a section assessment questions. Okay, um, mentioned section assessment, and this slide uh, shows some of those. Uh, we heard uh, from teachers that it would be important to 
label the types of questions that are being covered or the items that are being covered. So you can note that the first one relates to that note taking feature that I mentioned earlier. So this question comes directly from the notes the students were be ass being assigned to uh, keep for the section and now they're being asked to report back on uh, an answer or an item that directly comes from that note taking assignment. Again, if you choose not to use that note taking assignment for a particular section, this question can be answered directly from the material. Then there's some straight uh, comprehensive questions that are um, uh, clearly answered, answerable from the material in the section. And then other things like uh, application things, how they would use the material in the section, apply it to their own life. There's also uh, general reflection type questions. There's def vocabulary glossary questions that uh, come up in different sections as well. Also like to point out the chapter summary sections that come in each chapter. And there's quite a bit of material here. Um, we have a, a paragraph or two that summarizes the sections in the chapter and then a little bulleted assignment that comes with those chapter summaries. And these are important. We ask teachers when we produce these, what would you use these for or should we include them in, in the material at all? And again, the answer came back an overwhelming yes. And some of the ideas were they would use them as study guides for the assessment that's about to come up. They would use them as essay questions or bonus questions that would be used on the assessment. and. Uh, other assignments that could be used with the section as it's being taught during the class. So we've definitely kept those in here in the material as, as something that we think will be valuable to you. Um, next, uh, we have a, a ch chapter assignment uh, options. There's three options in each chapter. And in the teacher manual, uh, there's rubrics and uh, ways to assign these uh, assignments or suggest these assignments, again, based on a student's learning style. So at the beginning of a, a unit, which is usually about seven to 10 days in length, uh, based on our teacher uh, manual, scope and sequence, and curriculum guide, uh, a teacher would assign the option of students picking one of these assignments. And then they would have that seven to 10 day period to complete that assignment. So it's a little bit of longer assignment than one of the just basically journaling or comprehensive questions that take place at the end of a section. This is something that um, would take about the, the seven to 10 days to complete. And again, we have rubrics that for these, for grading these assignments uh, in our teacher resources. Um, then um, the other the other things that are in the chapter summary section are a faithful disciple feature, which is basically a sync profile. We've uh, included these often in our previous edition text and we've been commended on these. The one thing I wanna mention as far as a difference in these, two, two things actually, one is that we've decided to place them here in the chapter summary so that you have the option of teaching this material whenever you would like. Previously, it was placed in a specific place in the chapter, and I think teachers felt like, and also uh, in writing the teacher uh, wraparound edition, we felt like we had to kind of force feed that element on a particular lesson. Now you have the full option of whatever lesson you're using throughout this chapter of, of uh, adding a, a little addition of the Saint profile. And then the other thing, the second thing that we've added to this from our first edition is we've added uh, um, some comprehensive questions that go along with it. And these two, two are again, make sure the students are reading the material, They're, um, the answers come directly from the material. And second, uh, a writing assignment that you can assign as a homework journaling assignment, in-class assignment that goes along with uh, the Faithful Disciple profile. Next is uh, an explaining the faith uh, element. And again, we've had these in our previous uh, textbooks. And this is written in an apologetic style of question and answer about the faith. These questions are basically taken from the challenge questions that are in the secondary level of protocol of the USCCB, along with some other appropriate um, apologetic type issues that uh, on our faith that relate to the topic of the course. So they're written in basic question and answer format. And again, there's a further research search, uh, element at the end of this uh, uh, feature that the students are asked to do a little assignment. We don't wanna just throw things into the textbook without having a way for the students to follow up, for you to assess that they did the material, that they know the material. So that's right built within the student textbook. And then, um, as always, we end the chapter with a, a prayer that's connected with the material that's covered in, in the um, 
chapter and this prayer can be used throughout the session. It can be used, of course, at the opening of a uh, class. It can be used at the end and it can be used more than once. After telling you a little bit about what is in a particular chapter from one of our textbooks in the New Encounter in Jesus series, I'd like to tell you more about when some of the textbooks will be available, some of the formats they're offered in, and a little bit about our high school religious education team at Ave Maria Press. First of all, uh, Jesus and the Church, One Holy Catholic Apostolic, is a new textbook for Course 4 of the USCCB framework, and it is available now. Also, Foundations for Catholic Social Teaching, the textbook for elective Course C of the same framework, is also available now. Um, future textbook releases are expected in both the 2016-2017 school year, uh, with the remaining textbooks available in the 17-18 school year. They're all in various stages of development. Some are with the USCCB committee right now, and we expect those to be released by that latter date. Uh, some of the formats, uh, first of all, before I even talk about the formats, how about talk about our very popular online classroom resources. They will continue to be offered with many updates for each of our textbooks. Some of the favorites are uh, reading study guides, uh, PowerPoint presentations, YouTubes that are uh, videos that are connected with each chapter of our text, along with some questions and discussion uh, items that go with each of those videos. Uh, Jeopardy games, crossword puzzles, and then a variety of test options as well. And those are all available on our uh, website under classroom resources. You can click on a textbook and find those uh, for each of the books that you need and you can cross-reference them from different books as well for if you want to look for a different topic. Uh, all our books are offered in several different electronic formats. We have in iBooks, we have PDF files, and we have um, several other options that um, I'm sure you're aware of and you can get more information on by talking to some of our staff. Okay. Here's a picture of our very, very valuable religious education team at Ave Maria Press. Uh, your contact person is Christopher Salick, whose picture is below on the bottom left-hand corner. And you can email or call Chris at any time and he will give you plenty of information on anything that I've talked about here and much, much more. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. and best wishes for you in this semester and beyond.